What's up squad? This is Brandon from the Bantu Sun and thanks for joining us today. So I wanted to talk about today uh, Latin America and as I, as I do these different, these takes, these understandings uh, of how I see what's going on in the world and just interesting tidbits and insight, I, I like to reflect on my coverage. Of course, uh, at the Bantu Sun, we do try to have of uh, 55, 45, uh, leaning toward the, the tropics and understanding what's going on in such a massive, important part of the world, but underrepresented uh, as well. So I, I noticed that Latin America had fell off our radar on some things. We weren't necessarily reporting doing a lot of videos on Latin America. And I asked myself this question. So the way I see Latin America is Latin America is basically two anchors, right? an eastern anchor and a, and a western anchor. So the eastern anchor is the, the Lusophone country. And, and it's, it's very interesting because it's also the, the most eastern uh, uh, country. If, if you look at its shoulder, the shoulder of Brazil. But you have Brazil, this, this Portuguese giant um, to the, in South America. And the most western Latin America country, you would say, uh, is the Hispanic country of Mexico. So both of these countries are very, very big and they're, they're pretty much 600 to 650 million people in Latin America. And one out of two, those two people are gonna be either from Mexico or Brazil. Uh, these countries are very influential, very major, and they have big footprint. Mexico is the largest Spanish-speaking country, a predominantly Spanish-speaking country in the world, more than twice the population of Spain itself. Brazil is, is South America, right? Brazil touches nine out of the other 11 countries of South America on the continent. The only countries Brazil do not touch is going to be uh, Ecuador and Chile, which is our smuggled or, or smothered against the a uh, specific coast on the South American continent. So Brazil is massive. So what we see is both of these two places have very distinct challenges uh, with Mexico. So we, we did a SWAT video on Mexico and uh, we think America is a big issue for Mexico. And Mexico's struggle has always been how to survive and thrive in the shadow of the Northern Colossus of the United States. We can't be remiss uh, in understanding Mexican history. Half of Mexico was chopped off in the Mexican-American War. And big, big important parts, such as California and Texas. So roughly one out of five Americans living in America today live in either California and Texas. These are number one and two most economically and demographically powerful states in the United States. These are not small nuggets. And they were removed from Mexico. So Mexico has had to thrive uh, in the shadow of dealing with American relations. And one of the things they have done, which was, was the smart thing to do, is build economic relations with America. Uh, so that even though there's been this animosity and contention, Mexico has found ways to develop. But at the same time, it is a certain ceiling that it seems that Mexico is, is going up against that it needs to break out of. Because of a lot of what's going to drive these countries, if you look at economic development and history, it's always uh, reverberated throughout the neighbors. So if you want countries of Central America and South America and the Caribbean to do better, chances are it's going to have to take a catalyst, the most likely catalyst would be a country like Mexico, one that's more developed, more economically empowered, that's going to invest in these smaller uh, countries and, and drive that growth. So uh, Mexico does have those challenges in, in dealing with America and finding its niche in a way to grow its economy next to the most powerful country um, in the history of the world to date. Brazil has a totally different struggle. So Brazil is kind of out there on the island being um, far away, uh, primarily uh, Southern Hemisphere based, and it's they just elected Lula. So the reason why this is important, excuse me, they just elected President Lula da Silva, 
And one of his major primary concerns was saving the Amazon jungle. So the Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest. I'll put this in perspective. The Amazon rainforest is the largest rainforest in the world. The Amazon rainforest is going to outlast my grandchildren's grandchildren. Now, conversely, Brazil has been relatively economic stagnant for over a decade. Brazil GDP has not surpassed its 2010 numbers. So it's very interesting that the route that Brazil has taken, especially being a massive country uh, that Brazil is and a highly populated, over 200 million people in Brazil, the route they take is not for economic development, but they're, they're choosing this, this environmentalist leaning um, policies or and not one that's going to, uh, a president that's looking to invest, drive growth relations and investment into his countries to raise the, the standard of living, et cetera. Uh, and I, I just find that to be interesting because I think the number one thing with any development is going to be how can you develop your commercial class, the commercial class that drives the innovation and development of the country. If you look at the most, uh, how should I say, Global be aware countries, they're going to be relatively economically developed. There's a, a funny saying that the USB have saved more trees than Greenpeace. And this is how commerce works. Commerce works off of how people are uh, influenced and incentives. So Brazil hasn't embraced the, that model yet. Brazil hasn't taken their position um, I always like to say the, the quote from the, the German, uh, the Israeli minister that says, Brazil is an economic giant. I guess it's massive, demographic giant as well. But it's a, it's a political dwarf. And it's because Brazil has this somewhat of apathy towards stepping into its role that's rightfully theirs in, in this world. So I really hope that um, one day, I, and I think it's going to be one day sooner than later probably, but Brazil, everything is, that's needed is there. Brazil has the resources. Brazil has the, the, the geography. It has the, the space. And Brazil can almost be anything in the world it wants to be. And the only one stopping Brazil from fully developing that is Brazil. So we're going to continue to watch these two countries. And I really believe that these two angers are going to be the drivers of any success. If Latin America does great in this world, it's going to become these two countries do great. And if Latin America struggle and be wayward, it's going to be because these two countries are going to struggle and be wayward. So let us know your thoughts. Please comment below. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you enjoy the content. We'll love to hear your thoughts. Uh, until next time, take care. Back to up.